Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Token Boast interview. Today we have Mr. Wilson Wong, the Thank founder you. and CEO of Order Pets. Order Pets, yes. So could you give a brief introduction about yourself and about your platform as well? Uh, okay, my name is Wilson. Um, I'm from Singapore. And Order Pets is actually a Singapore company that focuses on education technology. It is an AI companion chatbot. We focus a lot on the companions part because most chatbots that is, if you see online are very much a set of if-else statement. But we have conversational memory. That differentiates us from a lot of chatbots that is out there. And this chatbot serves a very important function, very much in the realm of education. And that is probably the genesis of why we chose the, the name Orpet. Uh, it, is, it originates from the uh, Estonian language and maybe just to pay tribute to Estonia. It's a very small country in Eastern Europe where it's, the government is extremely forward-looking and they have introduced this e-residency program that attracts global entrepreneurs all over the world to start a, start, start a business over there with the direct access into EU. And I was actually contemplating on um, you know, starting an Estonian company for that. But the Singapore government was, uh, I mean, Singapore is also a fantastic place and that's the reason why we stayed there. And I think it's the best of both worlds, right? Orpets give us the sense of the Estonian uh, name with a Singapore educational pedigree. Uh, and that's something that we think is very uh, useful for us in our course, to, in this grand vision that we are trying to achieve. Yeah. I think it's the first one of its kind because I've never seen a platform where it combines AI and education <laughs> together. How yeah. did you come up with the idea? So, um, okay, so my background has been in investments. I was in the Tamasic as an investment officer for almost a decade and uh, my last role was actually the managing director of the Southeast Asia uh, investment department in Fosan International. And um, uh, doing DC work, right, is also venture capitalists. I know the kind of contradicting questions I, I ask, right? Like, for example, what is your niche? What is the competitive advantage? And the whole idea is when, when the entrepreneur tells me well, that, that specific niche, I will ask them a simple question like, uh, why aren't the incumbents doing it? And they will tell you, oh, because it's too small or, or that. And then I said, then it's too small. <laughs> and that's where I come in and say, why not let me take out 40% of your company, you know, and value add and all that. So I know the contradictions around there. And um, Peter Thiel, uh, one of my uh, actually idols, he is a great teacher. He mentioned in the book Zero to One, right, that um, great companies, right, they don't go for niche. In fact, they look for ideas, right, that complements each other. So it's a union versus intersex kind of rule. Uh, and, uh, and I actually learned that very well. And he says, if you want to invest in a company with unique niche, right, I invite you to invest in a Lebanese, Italian, Japanese fusion restaurant in San Francisco. Very niche. You can articulate the competitive uh, advantage immediately. But can you survive? That's one of the key things. So, uh, so from there, we decided to uh, think about all these buzzwords. Yes, it's buzzwords. But um, how... Realistically, can we be the best? Can we be the fastest in AI, in blockchain, in, uh, in edutech, in chatbots? It's impossible. Mm -hmm. So that's the reason why we think about, okay, if we cannot be the best and the fastest, what can we do where we slowly just focus on what we do well and slowly reinforces each other to make it such that the competitive modes will be widened in the, in the, in the middle to long, uh, longer term. And that's what we are trying to do down here. So while we recognize that we cannot be the best uh, edutech company, we choose our market segment very carefully. Um, many students, uh, many edutech companies, right, talks about, uh, focuses a lot on the pedagogy uh, because they are in early, early childhood education where that is extremely important. And, but I am a father of two, so I don't even like it when my kids, right, um, uh, learn of, or what they call them learning, right? But it's playing on the, on the iPhone and iPad. So, but when it co uh, comes to the 13 years old, 14 years old, 15, 16 years old, secondary schools for the matter, you can't control that. And frankly, the, uh, the difficulties that the, children, the students face in school, the parents cannot help them. Even if they are PhD doctors or, or, or established titans of industry, they cannot answer the, the school question like differentiation and trigonometry. So that is where the students need help but they find a lot of difficulties. And in our market research, right, we realize that there is a need for students to learn well, uh, learn effectively. 
and um, frank, they, they are, students are not intrinsically hardworking. They just want more time because time is a rare commodity, right? And that's what we are trying to do down here um, to help the students revise effectively. That's the first word of our uh, the first uh, so-called mantra that we always talk about: revise effectively through an educational chat box, a chat box that teaches uh, helps the students revise very effectively. Uh, and the next thing is about recording accurately. What does recording accurately means? It basically means we collect the relevant information, right, that a student needs for the next stage of their life, college admissions. So the other key problem that we are trying to solve, right, the first is, of course, effective revision because time is a rare commodity. The second is about what to do after secondary school. We want to collect relevant information, but to think that any student is going to just volunteer information to you is naive. That is the reason why we have these chatbots right, that brings constructive conversations that says that, hey, this, this app is going to tell you uh, or give you advice on what you can do in the future. But before that, you need to provide us with the information. But providing us with this information for what purpose? For college admissions. So we will be collecting your, your birth certificate, NRIC, the typical information that you actually have to go and collect them for your normal college admission. But with this data, Together with our partnership, very unique partnership with uh, the University of Cambridge Psychometric Centre. So they are embedding their psychometric uh, profiling tool where we can actually um, use their, the student's digital footprint to come up with a big five personality profile or you know the Myers-Briggs personality test, right? And with that, that personality, we can then very effectively recommend the best universities in the world or the courses of study for them to pursue doesn't mean that they have to follow because it's just like YouTube, they recommend the videos. Do you click on it or not? That's entirely up to you. Yeah. But we recommend that. That so, is what we are trying to do. So as an example, mm. say a high school, a 12th grader yes. is interested in art. Yes. How would your AI chatbot respond mm. to that student? So, so they may say that they like art. It is part of our algorithm to measure that, right? But there will be a lot of other things, into, including their academic records, their big five personality profile, and all that, right? To evaluate whether is it really true that they are the best, right? And of course, the preference is a key part of, of our algorithm as well. And that will recommend all the, the courses of study uh, to them, for them to consider applying. Mm, and then your bot calculates Correct. a maybe per se a recommendation so that Correct. the user might consider. Correct. Wow. But that is just the AI parts of things. The, um, in fact, we do have innovations in the, uh, in the blockchain solutions, the distributed ledger uh, solutions that we are doing. So what we have in, uh, come up with is actually a blend of the um, hyperledger fabric and Ethereum. So um, this is get go going into a bit more technical space. Uh, but the hyperledger fabric is, comes from IBM, mm -hmm. where it's using proof of authority. But the, always, the, the, the limitations there is that you cannot incentivize people, right? Because it's proof of authority. There's nothing to incentivize, oh, yes, right? Yes. Yeah, so you need proof of work, right? Mm -hmm. So we've come up with an elegant solution that blend the two of them together in order to incentivize and build a global alliance of high schools and universities to help validate the records. Mm -hmm. Then you can truly build a one true source of high school records for much greater use in the future. Student loans, uh, banks, scholarship providers, HR offices can now have one access point, right, to just uh, to validate the records of the students. That's what we are trying Very to do. Very expensive and incredible. Mm. Uh, curriculum in every country is different, as you might know. How will your platform manage the diversity of uh, curriculums in worldwide? Very, very good question. So we start off in UK. Uh, right now, frankly, um, to learn the curriculum is not difficult. You can partner with any publishers. They have the data bank of questions. You have the revision notes. Curriculum is pretty much the same for high schools all over the world. Similar. That's why we target only the, the non-subjective subjects like um, biology, chemistry, physics, mathematics. Uh, literature, a lot of it, right, and history potentially can be a little bit uh, more subjective right, or, or with a point of view. So we uh, veer away from that. So we focus a lot on this, uh, not, uh, these science subjects and mathematics, and we train our robots in that sense. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how we do it. So, and in fact, you have just touched upon something very important, uh, what we call the open-loop blockchain uh, concept. Mm -hmm. So um, compared to a closed-loop blockchain, uh, it is almost akin to something like a Starbucks card. 
right, where you issue a rewards card and you can only use within the cafe, the uh, chain, right, that's out yes, there. Yes. That is a closed loop uh, block, a blockchain. Yeah. Uh, and that's a closed loop network. And is the scaling up, right, is usually much more linear. Mm -hmm. But what we are designing here, instead of replacing national curriculum, which is what Coursera, Baiju, uh, Udacity is trying to do, and they are the giant titans, very good company, I love them. In fact, I learned AI, I'm actually learning from, from Coursera, <laughs> right, as part of my continuous training. But um, they are trying to replace, uh, so it is, no matter what, even if they issue a token or issue any cryptocurrency, you can only use it within that, that yes, framework. But now, because I'm designing it to complement national uh, education, mm. I start off in UK. The moment I go to India, the moment I go to Indonesia, Korea, Japan, all I need is just to get my technology to go and learn those uh, curriculum and I can offer it to the students there. And the whole students, the whole group of students that come on into it is going to beef out and the, the, the whole network and therefore Metcalf Law and network effects can set in. So it's a constant learning, self-expanding yes. blockchain platform, is it? Correct. Of course, the, uh, the AI to learn, right, I have to physically go to a country, <laughs> right, <laughs> secure the curriculum, right? And it's not difficult to secure a curriculum. There's nothing wrong with just go and read through the textbook, right? <laughs> Scan through the textbooks and, 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 and understand the, the curriculum. Yes, yes. Um, but it will be like an Uber model where I just go to different countries and just learn the curriculum. And it would be offered there. And this is a good time for me to pay tribute to the smartphone pioneers, oh, yes. right, that actually brought that medium, uh, that distribution channel for us mm -hmm. to the masses. Yeah, the, that's the whole idea. Yeah. So, as you might know, sure. Korea is famous for its education competition. Sure. So, when do you plan to launch here and do you have any plans for Korea? Oh, I, I am looking forward to, okay, hand to hearts, uh, Korea is a difficult market to penetrate. <laughs> Um, because you need to, I, I don't understand the language and I need good partners, right, where to, to help to secure the curriculum and to roll out these services. Um, it is a, it's a useful tool. There is a grand social mission here, right? Um, we believe that education as a leveler of uh, life is important. It is the enabling of equality of opportunities. But as with any institutions, right, the rich gets rich, the poor gets poor. The, the only reason is because Everybody takes the same exams, but the wealthy has, has, can afford $250 per subject per month of tuition. So what we are trying to do here is using digital technology. It may not be the best, the perfect one at the beginning, but it's adaptive learning. All right, YouTube, uh, Netflix, Spotify, it's all the AI engine I'm bringing into education. And then with that $10 per subject per month, sacrifice two cups of, of Starbucks coffee, right? And the media income can offer it to the, uh, to the children. And I haven't even tell, to tell you about the part of philanthropy, okay? Um, our idea also encompasses uh, this philanthropy element. Uh, right now, we know that there are a lot of um, really nonsensical corruptions, uh, scandals in, in, in charities, right? Like in, the, in 2015, I, I, rec I remember there's this Kids Wish ne Network that uh, three cents on the dollar end up with the beneficiaries. 97 cents gone due to inefficiency, blatant corruption, and inefficient corruption, or what you call indirect corruption. Flying first class, going to you know, exotic retreats and all that. And now I'm introducing a whole new, brand new way of uh, philanthropy. Instead uh, of uh, passing it to some intermediaries, these these this, uh, donors, right, the foundations all over the world, they can immediately just purchase the coins Right? or the tokens of a, an exchange, not from me, of the exchange, and now gives them directly to the digital wallets of the, of the students, of the poor, right? the lesser privileged, and they start to use the services and they, with the access to their academic records, uh, their progress. It's a whole new world of uh, uh, philanthropy over there, and that's what we're trying to, to promote over here. It is a grand vision, of course, no doubt, but, but I, I do believe that, you know, uh, Victor Hugo says, right, nothing is more powerful than an idea whose time has come. Mm -hmm. And the time has come because the pioneer, smartphone pioneers has brought the distribution channel, established that, the decentralized technologies comes about, AI has moved from deterministic if-else statement to probabilistic model that makes it possible to understand the user. So there's a marriage of all these ideas, right, from Orpac, and that's what we are trying to do down here. So how can users or maybe yeah. our audiences take part in your project? 
buy, buy our tokens, I suppose. <laughs> <laughs> so we are having our private sale now until the end of June and the ICO is slated to be the 1st of uh, July. And of course, after that, we've, uh, the amounts raised is very much to, uh, to build, the, to de develop the technology even further because we do understand we are targeting a very highly entitled uh, population. Uh, remember that this is 2018. Um, even those born in 2000 or 2001, right, they are 18 years old, really beyond our, our scope. We are targeting the SEC 3, SEC 4, J1, J2, or grade 9 to 12. So this is post millennials okay? We better make sure our user flow, user interface is fantastic, right? So that's, that's, that's what we're trying to do here. And, and hopefully this can help to truly address the income inequality divide. Equality of opportunities through deploying yeah, dis disruptive technologies in education. I mean, it sounds like a very promising and a very well-intended project, I yes. believe. So, any last comments to our audience? Um, okay, so I suppose um, a lot of people will be asking, um, is it really okay for us to have, um, you know, is cryptocurrency a real thing, right? Creating something out of nothing. But I have always been puzzled by this question because it seems like, um, it seems like credit creation happens every day. Banks, governments issue money creating something out of nothing every day. But we, you know, 200 over years after the Wealth of Nations has been written, right? Um, Adam Smith's uh, Wealth of Nations, we, we seem to take it for granted that, hey, it's okay for governments and banks to create something out of nothing. But let's go back to the basic. Uh, applications or, or value of something of a medium of exchange comes from applications. And two people forms a transaction, three will form a market. And if there is a value right, of this cryptocurrency used in a certain application that is continuously growing, who is to say that that is, uh, that is not valuable and that is useless? I Thank guess that's my concluding great. remark. <laughs> yeah. Thank you for a great interview. Ladies Thank you very much. Thank you for tuning in. That was Mr. Wilson Wang, founder and CEO of Old Bet. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. Yeah.